This is Graveyard Girls, a game by Tidal Blossoms, made for this year's uh, Spooktober visual novel game jam. A game about uh, grief and seeking closure. A chance meeting in a graveyard on All Hallows Eve. Graveyard Girls depicts the complicated and traumatic aftermath of losing a parent during young adulthood. This topic has been addressed as authentically as possible. Of this I have no doubt. If you're struggling with grief, you may not have a safe experience playing this game. Be aware. And take care of yourself. Graveyard Girls contains strong language, mature humor, drug use, self harm memories of suicide, mention of suicide, alcohol use, and sexual themes. 18 years or older. Viewer discretion is advised. Should I continue? Yes. The leaves crunch below my feet as I make my way through the cemetery, counting each row that I pass. A frigid gust of wind catches my hair and blows it into my vision. I tuck it away carefully. I can't even remember how he used to tease me about finding my long hair everywhere. He'd always tell me how beautiful it was. Once I find the section I've been searching for, I let it aside, although it's not of relief. The cold stone inscription stares back at me, expressionless. Jason Gray, beloved husband and father. As I, read the, as I read the name quietly to myself, I feel like he's greeted me in his own way. What am I supposed to say? Nothing seems quite right, so I settle on the simplest of phrases. Hi, Dad. I made it. I know it's been a while. In truth, it's been too long. The last time I visited, he didn't even have a headstone. I'm... I'm sorry. I should have come sooner. What am I thinking? Coming here isn't going to help. As if talking to a polished rock is going to bring any kind of closure. I turn to leave, but there's a magnetism to this place. As if he'd reached for my hand and said, You're leaving already? I gaze back at his headstone and whisper to myself. You want me to stay? Fine. My mom always insisted that I be careful not to stand on graves when visiting cemeteries. But that was out of respect for strangers. This is my dad's resting place. I'd sat on his lap a thousand times before. What would he care if I rested on his grave now? I know he wouldn't have minded. Without another moment of hesitation, I brush away the leaves and sit back against his headstone. I lay my notebook across my thighs and settle into place. If I'm staying for a while, I'm getting comfy. Well, I guess I'm guessing not much has changed with you. He'd appreciated that sarcasm. Dark humor was his thing. That's probably where I got it from. I'll just sit here and talk to myself. Like a crazy person. Hmm. Oh. I guess it's time to tell you what's been going on. You might not love what I have to say next. You'd probably be angry. At least I think you would have been. I'll try to keep it short. So... You... you died. And no one saw it coming. One day you were... gone. I don't think I've processed that yet, to be honest. 
Mom couldn't handle the pain, so she shut down. Guess that was her coping mechanism. She spent months crying over you. She barely slept or ate. I didn't expect this to be easy, but I thought I'd still have my mom to lean on. I convinced myself that I was lucky to have her, regardless of how she was handling this. That's what I kept telling myself on the worst days. You weren't alone either. People tried to support her. Aunt Cora wanted her to visit a therapist, but Mom locked the doors and ignored the phone. I tried to talk with her too, but it was like she couldn't hear me. She was a shell of a person, shutting everything and everyone out. I thought she needed time. But... One morning she bought, packed her clothes and brought a, bought a plane ticket. There was no warning. She said she'd be back in two weeks, that she needed a vacation. Mom left, and it sucks to say, but I knew she wouldn't come back. I've seen her a handful of times since. One of those times was to sell the house that you built. I still drive past it. I like to pretend that she'd be waiting on the porch, having a cigarette or watering the plants. Soothing in a strange way. Like opening my favorite chapter in an old book. Pretending I don't know the ending. I pause to catch my breath. Mom's in an apartment on the other side of the country with her new boyfriend, but I stayed here. She upped my tuition and rent, but she's gone. Honestly, if you saw her today, you wouldn't recognize her. I feel like I never really knew her. She left me behind, and I think it's because I remind her of you. There's a hole in my heart where my mom used to be, and... I hated her. A part of me still does. I have to think it would be easier if she disappeared. Isn't that horrible? Fuck me. Saying it is worse than feeling it quietly. <sighs> Daddy, I spent so much time hating her. She took up all the space I had left in my heart. The worst part of it all is... It's that... I think I forgot to deal with losing you. It's world-destroying. That's why I'm here today. It's the person I need to talk to most in this world isn't part of this world. I look skyward as I blink back, welling tears. Aha! Uh -huh. Aunt Cora used to tell me to think of you smiling down on me. I keep thinking how sweet she is to say that. When I picture you, you're looking up. That sounds dark, but seriously, what's left of you is six feet below me. Cora wanted me to remember you in a happy way, I get that. I'm just too literal. Not good with that, uh... Yeah. I search for what to say next and wonder what he'd say if he were here. The truth is, I don't know what you'd feel. I didn't get a chance to know you better. Cora's words echo in my mind. That smile. What was your smile like, anyway? And why didn't I try harder to preserve it in the first place? Frustration that I can't swallow begins to form in my throat. I stay silent, afraid that my voice will break and the rest of me will follow. I do my best to reanimate my dad's grin in my mind's eye, but there's nothing. A stray leaf dances in front of me before heading west with the wind push away the distraction and close my eyes, forcing myself to focus on his lost expressions. I try to revisit each part of him. His amber eyes. His perfectly straight nose. The way his eyebrows furrowed when I asked too many questions. Slowly I could piece him together, but he wouldn't assemble. 
Even his voice was a doling whisper. I could not remember how he spoke. One exact phrase plucked from my memory would be enough to hear him. But the words remained unspoken. I couldn't even remember how he sounded when, I, when he said I love you. Clear pain began to claw at my chest, one I buried under a mountain of pills early in the morning. No, 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 not now. I inhale a ragged breath and shove the shadows away. It's something I've practiced for a while now. Keep talking. Distract yourself. You know, it's good that I visited before the snow. Winter is nearly here. I may not realize it, but today is your favorite holiday. It's also the day you died. Oh, four years ago. Maybe you knew that part, though. He suffered long enough to know he was going to die, I think. That was the detail that made me vomit when they told me about his accident. He was awake when the ambulance arrived. Oh, no. Why wasn't it faster? In my constant reimaginings, he's al he'd always be unconscious. I couldn't bring myself to picture any, any details. I didn't want to remember how he suffered, but it was part of his story. It was part of his life. His suffering and vices had even drifted into my dreams to it lately. The anniversary always amplified them. I tried smoking and drinking. Just, just to see what you thought was so great about it. I must have got the genes from you because they're my favorite crutch now. Oh. Oh no. I don't know why you tortured yourself with them. At least I have my reasons. But I did know. Mom stopped hiding their broken marriage once his casket was closed. Oh. Oh, no. I knew things were rough, but I didn't realize how destructive they were. God, no wonder she just up and left it all. Lately, I've started to question if my mother was the true monster in his life. I... Funny, I spent, uh, it's funny, I spent so much time asking myself why you tortured yourself with shitty choices when I mirror them daily. That's why I'm here, too. Because I'm your daughter. I came here to suffer, not to heal. This pain doesn't mend like a paper cut, Dad. It festers like a gunshot. I'm so frustrated because now I know who Mom is. She's shown the world her true colors. You deserve better. Why can I picture her so perfectly? It's not fair. I bite my lip and push my mother's face from my memory. From my memory. This, is, this isn't about her. Don't let her steal this moment. Anyway, I've been writing quite a lot, actually. Almost daily. It's therapeutic, I think. Getting my feelings on paper helps me feel detached from them. They're a little less heavy when I read them aloud. When I write, I can push the darkest thoughts I'm having away, even momentarily. The best part is I'm not afraid that someone's listening and analyzing. It feels safer than the grief counseling I attended. I don't think the professionals were judging me, but when they listened, I felt them processing my words and misunderstanding. God, that's a relatable feeling. Just because I write dark things doesn't mean I'm a dark person. I'm reaching for brighter thoughts and feelings when I let those words go. Putting it on paper rather than keeping it bottled up inside to fester. My new therapist understands. They, they are good. She's different than the others. Finally feels important that I go to my appointments. I don't look forward to them because they're a lot. When I leave, I feel lighter. Like I've lessened the load on my shoulders. I get scared sometimes because each day is a wild card. 
hate feeling like feeling like everything is out of my control. I'm terrified that therapy can't save me. I don't want to bottle things up again. Holding that shit in was the worst idea I've ever had. Fuck it. Dad, I'm done pretending. I drink. I smoke. I popped some pills before I left the house. I'll do anything to be numb. I'm afraid that scribbling my feelings is, isn't enough. I thought the pain was dulling, but it's worse than the day you died. I know you're not here today, but I keep picturing you in every tomorrow. Each day that image grows a little dimmer. Between losing you and mom taking off, I've been trying so hard to feel empty. Being happy felt out of reach, so feeling less became the best option. It turns out being destructive couldn't save me. You can't hear drowning girls cry. Oh. Oh god, that's a loaded line. I poured the overflowing stream of tears with my sleeve and shut my eyes. That's a powerful line. Practice those deep breaths. It's okay to be upset. I inhale. And exhale. The breaths are intruded on. The earth sways below as a sensation of floating overcomes me, almost like sitting on a boat. Uh oh. Why does it feel like the world's drifting? It's probably those stupid allergy pills. A twinge of concern washes over me as I try to imagine the state of my liver. But I excuse the thoughts quickly. It's not like I eat vegetables or drink enough water every day. Coffee, bread, and cheese are my food groups. It's dumb to take more pills before leaving. I know it's a bad day when they can't keep me from crying. I'm trying to focus on the positives. At least, I was, at least I was doing better. Taking them as prescribed was a challenge, but I'd managed to do for quite a while. Today was a hiccup. And if any day is going to be a slight step backwards, it's going to be this day, right? Now, usually a subtle but helpful bandage. I'm an idiot for thinking they'd handled this visit. A subtle can't cover this. How could I ever expect this visit to be easy? It was naive of me. Today is always going to fucking sting. Words I've whispered under my breath a thousand times echo out once again. You're never going to be okay. You're never going to be okay. Never. Ever. Again. Tell myself, I tell myself that I need to get those words out of my system. I know that they're bound to sit on the t tip of my tongue again, waiting to be, waiting to escape. My eyes still shut, I sigh and let my thoughts drift off with the vertigo. Maybe those pills weren't so useless. A chilly gust lifts fluttering leaves away from the earth, and I can hear them dancing through the air. I begin to imagine that I'm flying with them twirling away from this place. Away from my body. Uh, hello? A voice. Must have imagined it. Uh, are you okay? What the? I opened my eyes and stumbled upward and upward in a daze. I hurriedly dust off my clothes before looking toward the stranger behind the question. Oh, uh, sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. I'm taken aback by your presence. I didn't expect to see anyone here. Uh, n no, it's fine. You didn't scare me. My throbbing heart tells a different story. I suddenly feel thankful that I'm not the blushing type. Are, are you right? I'm... I'm fine. Why? She gestures towards my dad's headstone and suddenly raises her eyebrows. 
think you were sleeping on someone's grave. Did you, um, know them? I laugh half-heartedly. It's my dad. He wouldn't mind. Uh-oh! The girl's posture stiffens noticeably, and I remind myself to tone back the abruptness. You're not talking to a ghost anymore. Act normal! Why are you here? Wh what are you doing here? Um, I'm not here because it's Halloween, if that's what you're asking. I'm visiting, I guess. Smooth question. Coming off real friendly, Elle. Sorry, I phrased that poorly. I'm Elle, by the way. I'm Lucia. So, Elle, do you mind if I ask you why you're napping in a cemetery? Well, it wasn't on the agenda. I took allergy medication and it hit a little harder than I anticipated. Oof, I've been there. What are you allergic to? I scrambled to come up with a good excuse. Uh, not too sure. Had some hives and figured it was best to take a pill. Or four. You get it? Sometimes cats make, can make my eyes ish, my eyes itchy. I pet them anyway. They're worth it. <laughs> Mood. I can't help but smile back at Lucia. She seems sweet. So you were visiting someone too? Lucia's smile falters. Nice job, you're always good at brightening the room. Yes, my sister passed away. Her name was Kate. She died last week. Oh, I can't help but, I can't help but regurgitate the sentence that everyone had spoken to me in the past. Uh, I'm sorry. Lucia shifts her feet un uncomfortably and stares at the ground. I remember standing like that, too, unsure of how to respond. Uh, sorry, that wasn't the right thing to say. I don't mind, it's what everyone says. I know, I've been there. My dad died four years ago, so the memories are still pretty fresh. You see his eyes widen fearfully. They are? I struggle to backtrack, jump me to console her as best as I can. Not in the same way you're feeling. I mean that it's his anniversary today, so it feels closer than usual. You see his shoulders drop so slightly as her gaze softens. That's understandable. I get it now. We visiting on Kate's day too. Does visiting get easier? A Molotov mixture of disgust and embarrassment builds in my chest. What am I supposed to say? Oh gosh, uh... I decided that I shouldn't dump my experience on her. She has enough going on right now. I don't need to freak her out about dealing with complicated grief. I think so. It depends how often you come here. Visiting on emotional dates is going to be more difficult. I'd try visiting on normal dates if I were you. See, that's not quite twisting enough to... be outright lies. It feels like it's right in the middle of Vel's experience. And, yeah, drop in or whatever. That's smart. Thanks for the advice. I guess today is technically one of these normal days. Halloween wasn't super special to Kate. Lucia looks toward my father's headstone. Those are beautiful flowers. I like the arrangement you chose. I bite my lip. I bite on my lip unconsciously. Uh, thanks, but I didn't leave those. I think his sister was here earlier. Cora is big on flowers. Oh, well, she has good taste. Sorry to focus on the flowers. I can't help myself. I'm a florist. That's interesting. The 
anxious realization that I never thought to bring my dad flowers hits me. It never even crossed my mind. Does Lucia, does Lucia think it's rude that I didn't? Maybe you could suggest a bouquet for my dad. I should have brought one. Hey, if it's not your thing, don't feel like you have to buy them. Lucia smiles carefully as she reads me like an open book. I do have an idea, though, if you want to leave him something meaningful. Uh, please, I, I'd love to. I expected not to mean that, but for some reason, I want to. Wait here, please. And not as Lucia walks past me. Phew. I flip through my notes instead of staring after her, doing my best not to act entranced. Where did this girl come from? She's so sweet. A crunch of fallen leaves under footsteps carries from the distance. Lucia stands closer than before. I brought you this. She reaches into her bag and extends her hand. What? Oh! A single icy blue rose sits between her thumb and forefinger. I reach forward but stop in hesitation. Where did you get it? It was left at Kate's grave. A gasp escapes my lips and I shake my head. I, I can't take that. No, don't worry. Kate would want your father to have a flower. She doesn't like roses anyway. Lucia trails off, realizing what she said. I, I mean, I didn't. Kate didn't like roses. I try my best to reassure her with my gains as I accept the rose. Oh, faint trace of a smile. Thank you. That present tense thing, it goes away. Don't feel like you need to jump to correct yourself. Time will take care of it. Lucia nods silently in response. I kneel against the cold earth to place the blue rose onto my dad's grave. I realize how fresh the flower is. The edges of the petals have barely begun to wilt. I feel Lucia's eyes on my back. Before turning toward her, I ask the question on my mind. Lucia? Hmm? When was Kate's funeral? Yesterday. Oh gosh. As I face Lucia, I want to ask her why she's here today. I want to know how she's doing. I want to hug her. I want her I want to make her feel less alone, even if for a fraction of a second. I want to give her what I never had. And hell, that might be good for you, too. What of silence passes us by. Before I can ask Lucia to let me in, she breaks the silence herself. Are you still tired? I massage the back of my neck absentmindedly and laugh a little. Yeah. Do the dark circles give me away? Lucia giggles softly. No, your eyes are fine. That was kind of her to lie about. I've looked in a mirror before. I can't believe I fell asleep. It's a little embarrassing. I don't worry about it. Do you drink coffee? Yes, absolutely. Let me buy you one. You don't want to sleep through Halloween. There's a great coffee shop in the Old Town District. Old Town? Isn't that a little far? Did you drive here? Uh, no, I won't. I don't mind giving you a ride. Let me take you. It's my treat. Unless you have other plans. I... I don't, but... Part of me remains hesitant. Getting into cars with strangers isn't something my parents encourage, that's for sure. She seems harmless enough, but I don't actually know her. Plus, today is... Not exactly an easy day for me. All the better to not spend it alone. You see it quietly reads over my rigid stance. An explanation, she grins and starts to giggle at me. Did 
you want to take a selfie together? Um, what? You can send it to a friend. That way, if you go missing, they'd know exactly what to look for. I, I smiled back at her and suddenly shake my head. <laughs> nah, it's fine. I stick up my thumb in a hitchhiking fashion. I love the thrill of getting into a stranger's car. Lucia playfully rolls her eyes before winking, at, before winking at me. Buckle up then, we're going for a ride. We head towards the road, walking past rows of headstones side by side. I didn't imagine I'd be leaving here with someone. The feeling of walking close to her is strangely comforting. Guess I always expected to be here alone. Even if I had a special person in my life, I wouldn't ask them to come here. It's hard to understand what it's like to visit this place, unless you're missing someone. Drive to the coffee shop is uneventful. Lucia's car has heated seats, so I try my best to suddenly warm my hands under my legs. She doesn't seem to notice and stays focused on driving. We chat about the weather, mostly. Once we reach the Old Town District, Lucia carefully navigates toward the last parking spot on the street. Boo! This is the place! I've been here forever! After stepping out of the car, Lucia tugs gently on my sweater and guides me to the crosswalk. She's practically bouncing towards the cafe! Once we cross, we find ourselves at the front doors. Despite the chilly weather, they still offer outdoor seating. The waitress steps outside to greet us with a smile on her face. Welcome! If you'd like to take a seat, I'd be right with you. As the waitress steps inside, I move to follow her. Lucia pulls on my sleeve again with an expectant grin. Let's sit out here, it's more private. We take our seats outside the cafe. We can feel the energy of the cemetery fall away. Our table is vibrantly decorated with Halloween-themed trinkets and candles. This is so cute! Oh, kinda is. Can't argue with that. She definitely chose a uh, festive spot. The street is bustling with ghouls and witches. Even our waitress is dressed up. Happy Halloween! Can I just do one of our spooky specials? I see his eyes light up immediately. Ooh, what are they? The waitress grins, realizing she's hooked Lucia in. Today we have our pumpkin cheesecake paired with any of our fall specialty drinks for $8.99. Oh, fuck yes. Sign me up for that, sailor. You're craving something warm and hearty. We, have, uh, we also have our butter and nut squash soup with one of our fresh baked biscuits. Oh no. Lucia squeals with delight. Oh no, both of those sound good. I love cheesecake. Could you get the pumpkin cheesecake with pumpkin spice latte, please? I guess she likes pumpkins. Jotting down Lucia's order, the waitress's gaze darts towards me. What would you like? That pumpkin cheesecake sounds fine. And a drink? I racked my brain for anything other than a pumpkin spice latte. Uh, sorry, what are your other fall drinks? Maple pecan, maple, pe maple pecan, and chai lattes. Lucia raises her eyebrow and whispers exaggeratedly across the table. Psst, the maple pecan sounds super yummy. I can't help but chuckle. Okay, I'll get the maple pecan latte. I'm not a latte guy, but that does sound quite good. Maple pecan? Heck yeah. I'd try that. The waitress nods and leaves with a smile. <laughs> Barely a minute passes before our waitress rushes back to the table. Here are your lattes. Thanks so much. I'll bring your cheesecake over as soon as it's ready. Lucia peers over at me with a curious glimmer in her eyes. Do you think it's too hot to sip? I'm sure it's fine. I kept my lips and decided to take a swig. Yikes! My throat burns as I tried to desperately clear it, inconspicuously. I do my best not to sputter on Lucia as I reply. It's uh, quite warm still. She giggles softly. Oh. You didn't need to be my lab rat. Just trying to be helpful. Ugh. Lucia raises her cup and takes a careful sip. It's not that hot. Are you trying to scare me? Well, it is Halloween. 
did she not scald herself? Does she have no sense of temperature? Maybe that's why she chose outdoor seating on this chilly day. Do you like celebrating Halloween? I falter, unsure of how to explain myself. I used to. Lucia realizes what she's asked. Whoops. Uh, uh, sorry, I can't believe I forgot that today is... Hey, no apology necessary. I try my best to steer the conversation with a lighter tone in my voice. I do like Halloween, by the way. I just haven't done much other than hand out candy for a few years. Kids in my neighborhood love my place, and they know I always have tons of treats. Oh, you only hand out candy? You haven't dressed up? No, but I did like that part when I was in high school. Yeah. Great. I'm going to a costume party tonight. What do you think? Spooky or sexy? Uh-huh. What kind of costume should I go with? I have a closet full of options. Yeah. <laughs> well, spooky, obviously. Spooky. It's classic. She grins with an almost fiendish quality. I like how you think. Maybe I'll dress up as a witch? I can see her pulling off that look. Yeah. Your hair is perfect for a witch costume. Could go for a real mystical vibe. Do you think so? Absolutely. But would you let me tell you your fortune then? I shrugged, actually. Sure, I'd love to get some insight. Lucia reaches over and takes my hand in her own. She studies it carefully, squinting with exaggerated focus. Hmm. Evening. There are stars in the night sky. I see you're headed towards a house. With a witch. <laughs> Closes her eyes and yanks my arm even harder. I nearly fall across the table. Oh, jeez. Hey, be careful. Shh. I'm reading. There's a crowd of swirling capes and vibrant dresses. Oh, oh. Drinks and candies are being passed out on a rather colorfully lit room. You'll arrive there very soon. Uh, uh, I will? Lucia releases my hand for a grip and opens her eyes. So, did you want to come to the party with me? Yeah. I was going to go alone, but it would be great to go with a... Uh... Lucia's words drift away from me. Them stiffen, as if I've suddenly been plunged into icy water. Oh? Too much too soon? A party on Halloween? Oh, yeah, too much too soon. Too much too soon. Oh, this is exactly... That night. He went out that night. I was the one that called him. I bite my cheek, desperate to escape the coursing river of guilt. Oh no, Al. No. No freaking out. Not now. I dig my nails into my palm, trying to snap myself away from the echo of that Halloween party. Okay. Focus and breathe. The idea of rejecting Lucia hurts, but I can't go with her. Was my therapist saying trauma trigger rings in my ear? I promised that I'd stop being self-destructive and... I can't risk Lucia seeing me like that. I can't. Not, not tonight, at least. Ghost of that distant night appears. Disappears as quickly as it arrived. I'm at the cafe with Lucia. Okay. Lucia grips the handle of her mug and spins it absentmindedly. I thought you didn't have plans. Oh, girl, please. I have a date later. Sorry if I didn't mention it. Oh. Lucia, please. Oh, a frown escapes Lucia. A, a date? I nod. Oh. Yep, with a bowl of leftover candy. Good save. <laughs> leftover. Oh! Relief washes over her. If it isn't obvious already, I'm painfully single. It's not obvious. Really? Of course it isn't. You're so pretty. Second, my heart skips a beat. That... Wow. You are relentless, girl. 
I realize how rude I might be coming off. I mean, thanks. We break eye contact and struggle to continue. That's one way to step back into reality. Come on, keep it up. So, what's it like being a florist? My ploy to redirect the conversation is painfully evident. You see, it doesn't brush me off, luckily. My family's owned a flower shop for three generations, so it's pretty natural for me. What about you? Are you a student? Ah, uh, no, I graduated from a tourism and hospitality program. Work at the sp I work at the Spring Dream Suites. Oh, that sounds interesting. It's really not. It's time to fend off bad reviews, basically. I see a laughs, but I'm afraid it's forced. Do you like to travel? I haven't really traveled since I was a kid. If I ever had the chance, I'd love to work at a I'd love to work at a resort. Just to see what it's like to live in a warm climate. Count me in. I'm always down to book a room at an island resort. I promise I'll leave a good review too, if you give me a discount. <laughs> I can't help but giggle. I'll do my best. I'm curious about your job. What did you join your family's business? I started training when I was young. I spent plenty of summers playing in my grandmother's garden. She started the business with my grandfather. It's beautiful. They have a huge property out in the countryside. I loved putting together bouquets for my mom when I was little. My grandma would help me pick them, so they always turned out perfectly. She called it my training. The plan worked, though. I'm running the business with my parents now. My grandparents are retired, but they still help out when we're short-handed. Lucia's gaze seems to intensify. Feels like she's looking right through me. Is she alright? Sister. Sister. She notices, my, she, notices, she notices my concern and smiles reassuringly. Uh, sorry, I was thinking about those summers as a kid. I can still picture the day that my sister made a flower crown out of daisies. She put it on my head and called me a princess. It was just a game to Kate, but... She clears her throat. That was the day I fell in love with flowers. I'll never forget it. Lucia... That was a vulnerable, that was a vulnerable, vulnerable moment. Her hands tremble ever so slightly. She must have been nervous to share that memory with me. That's so spe- Hello, ladies, here's your pumpkin cheesecake. Before I can finish, our waitress interrupts. We prefer to set down our plates and cutlery. Can I get you anything else? I think we're good, thanks. The waitress steps away and heads inside. I fiddle with my notebook and flip through the pages while Lucia sips her drink. L, Can I ask you a question? I smile, eager to start chatting again. Go ahead. Lucia motions toward the table. What's that? Oh. It's my notebook. Like a diary? Sort of. It's a bit of everything. Unfinished thoughts, sketches, and some journaling. Don't usually carry it around. Brought it for your dad? Maybe it was obvious. Maybe she understands me. Yeah, I did. I thought about reading to him, but I felt weird once I got there. I talked to him instead, which wasn't much easier. I think I know how you feel. I tried talking to Kate today. But I couldn't. I left her voicemails instead. It felt closer to how things were. Almost normal. subtle, but Lucia's voice breaks as she trails off. Instinctively, I reach across the table. For a fraction of a second, my hand rests on top of her own. I pull away swiftly, feeling I, fearing that I had invaded her space. 
Sorry. She stares at her lap, unmoving. Thank you. That was nice. For a moment, I envisioned the horrible precipice Lucia is hovering on the edge of. Unfiltered. Unprocessed. Raw grief. One day she's going to realize that in the infinite possibilities of this universe, she will never see her sister again. The realization that there will never be another moment shared with Kate. The end of making memories at the beginning of their blurring. It seems clear, but it never is. Now? Yeah. Lucia bites at her lip and stares into her cup. I have questions that I'm afraid to ask anyone else. I don't want to be weird or rude. But you seem to understand loss better than anyone I've spoken to. I struggle to give her a good answer. What if I make her feel worse? I decide to warn her. Honestly, I am not the best person to get grief counseling from. I need someone to be real with me. I'm tired of being brushed off. Suddenly, the circle of chairs in the church basement revisits me. I felt brushed off, too. It was so discouraging. All right. What did people say to you? I heard that the stages can take years, but that the pain won't last forever. Is it true? The stages? Honestly, I forgot how, many, how much people like to focus on that idea. My grief wasn't in stages, at least not in the way I expected. It gives me a quizzical stare through glassy eyes. Oceans aren't dominoes, they don't fall in a logical pattern. My grief falls like sudden rain on a cloudless day. I can wake up in acceptance and go to bed angry or bargaining. I see his eyes brighten. That was poetic. I ignore her praise. Look, I know that your sister is always on your mind right now. But there's going to be days where you forget about Kate for longer than you ever thought possible. Forget about my dad all the time. Lucia seems startled by my admission. There are, there are moments when his memory doesn't stir any pain or tears. Because you're healing? No. I feel ashamed or angry, even dull at times. It always feels wrong. Because that's, that's just time, right? Time does this to all things, and then when you realize what's happening to your memories of that person, it just makes you feel guilty. Like you're a bad person for forgetting these things probably be disgusted with yourself for pulling it together and burying how deeply you miss her. Eh. I felt punished for trying to function. Going to work, visiting friends, even getting dressed. Putting away the pain is harder than carrying it. I just want you to know that there's no winning. There's no easy way to process that loss. She blinks carefully. Intentionally. As if she's truly absorbing the information. You know. Lucia stops to clear her throat before continuing. I didn't plan to go back to Kate's grave today. You didn't? No. I was driving around mindlessly and it sort of dawned on me that wandering in a daze was disrespectful to her memory would have done anything for a clear moment. Oh. I'm not sure that I follow. I don't want to demand answers, but I can't not have pretend it makes sense like that grief group did. That, that's... That screams of something long and drawn out and painful. 
not here to tell her that she's young and that it'll make it easier. I was wrong of them. Anecdotes and adages aren't solutions. I want to listen and do my best to understand her. But Lucia doesn't move to explain herself. If you're not ready to tell... I, I, no, it's fine. Sorry, I need a moment. I nod and wait for her to gather her thoughts. She takes a deep breath and begins. Kate suffered from chronic health problems and taught me what a privilege a pain-free day is. She tried her best to live a normal life, but her health had a habit of stealing happy moments from her. One morning, Kate didn't get up for breakfast. Mom went upstairs to check on her. They had plans to go shopping, so it was odd that she hadn't started getting ready. When my mom walked in, Kate wouldn't wake up. She was taking prescription drugs for her illness, and she aspirated in her sleep. Oh, no. Oh. It was sudden. She died all alone. And now I'm here. One week later. Enjoying a pumpkin spice latte while my sister started to rot in the ground. My heart shudders as she speaks the word. Rot. So, yeah, I get what you mean. There are no right choices. Every moment without her feels wrong. I feel like a stranger in my own life. I never say anything like that, especially to someone I've just met. But I, I spoke without hesitating. And I'm regretting every word. I'm afraid that you think I'm a freak. No. It's horrible, but... Everything you've said makes perfect sense. I don't want to tell her anything else. I want you to know that my heart doesn't feel like it did before. Lucia gives me a look that cuts deep. This girl is staring into my eyes, looking for hope. I reach out and squeeze her hand, but the comfort is forced. I know how to tell her that I'm broken, too. She doesn't deserve the whiplash of false hope. I don't want to see her bite that apple. I don't want to watch it turn to bitter ash on her tongue pull my hand away and break the silence. Can I put my number in your phone? Lucia straightens her posture and reaches for her bag. Um, sure. She unlocks her phone and hands it over. Carefully type my information in the new contact menu, making sure I leave Moon no mistakes. I know it's a cliche, but you can call me anytime. I don't care why either. It doesn't have to be an emergency. She nods as she stashes her cell phone back in her bag. Thank you. I still have questions, if you're willing. I feel an acidic hesitation burning in my throat. I'm not sure if I'm the person you should be around right now. I think you're wrong. I don't think I am. I tried talking to other people dealing with loss and it didn't help. Sometimes I wonder if the opposite would have been better. You need to surround yourself yourself with people who don't get it. How would that help? Maybe you'll convince yourself that you're just like them. Fake it till you make it, but the grief counseling version. Oof. That does not sound like a good idea. Look, I get it if you don't want to talk about grief, but I don't need kid gloves. She points to my lap. I want to hear the L that's in that that's in that notebook. I know you've already let me listen to her. When? The poetry, grief that falls like sudden rain on a cloudless day. I bet you twenty dollars that's been written in there. Which I wouldn't mind paying for the meal. I won't bet against her. 
I know she's right, and she knows it, too. Push aside my uncertainty. It's not like you have to see her again. If your answers freak her out, it was her choice to insist on them. But I find myself imagining her in my future. Where she fits in, I'm not sure. I was going to say, is that her in your future currently? Or her... her living through the four years that you just have, that you've just lived through now. But I'm certain that I want to see her again. Okay, I'll bite. Finally. First, you have to make me a promise. What kind of promise? When we go our separate ways, you have to text me after. You have to say bye, forever. Okay. I promise that I'll text you. I wink at Lucia playfully. Ask me anything. I'm an open book. She grins at the notebook pun. Okay, let's start weird. Was your dad's service an open casket? Yep. Did he look... himself? They never do. I hadn't seen a body before Kate's service. I don't know what I expected a dead person to look like, but it wasn't that. Looking at her made me feel... sick. Maybe it was afraid. I couldn't believe it was her. She looked like a doll. Like a weird imitation of Kate. Even when I wasn't staring at her, I knew exactly where she was. I couldn't tear my mind away from that image. She definitely didn't look like she was sleeping. She looked... dead. I could barely focus on the service. She was all I saw. It's awful, but I can't really remember what anyone had said to me that day. The eulogies are a blur. I pursed my lips. I had no one notice how she felt about seeing her dead sister. Why didn't anyone help her? Sorry nobody warned you before the funeral. I'm sorry that nobody saw what you were dealing with during the, during it either. You needed support and you deserved it. Thanks. Having a viewing isn't right for everyone. Please don't worry, it's okay to be freaked out. You're not the first to feel that way, trust me. There's a term for it. Seriously? Yeah, it's called Uncanny Valley. You look at someone you've seen animated with life and see that emptiness. An absolute absence of energy. It's different for everyone, but you're not going to like it. I'm sorry you saw Kate that way. You deserve the option not to. Lucia frowned sharply. You're right. No one asked if I wanted an open casket. My parents did all the planning. I just showed up. My mom did the opposite. She dragged me to every op moment of planning. Choosing Dad's casket. It's burned into my memory. There's no winning when you don't get a choice. We both deserve to make our own decisions. Lucia nods as her expression softens. Now, please don't feel pressure. I get it if you can't share anymore. I know that I'm not entitled to your pain or experiences, but I'd be lying if I said that I didn't want to hear them. Can I ask another question? This seems as good a point as any to... cut this off for now. I'm curious if this is any sort of ending difference here. But we'll try that out. We'll finish going through here. And we will try that out going forward. Until next time. Until then. <laughs>